Silence. What can be built through silence? Does silence truly heal pain or does it just prolong it? The Fountains of Silence tells the story of 18-year-old Daniel Matheson, the son of an oil family from Dallas, Texas, who comes to Madrid with his parents. In Madrid, he meets Ana, a Spanish girl working at the hotel, and together they embark upon a journey that unravels the deepest secrets and darkest silence of Franco Spain. Spain. I first truly explored Spain while on a book tour for my first novel. I fell completely in love, not only with the country, I fell in love with its people. From Madrid to Valencia, through Bilbao to Barcelona, Tarragona and beyond, I met Spanish readers, all from very different family backgrounds, but who all displayed deep empathy for the hidden history covered in my novels. They welcomed me with open arms and shared insight on conflict and human suffering and resilience. I quickly discovered that Spain is a classroom for the human spirit. And I was suddenly desperate, so desperate, to know more about Spain's history. But when I asked, some people told me, Spain's history is very difficult to explain. Others said, Ruta, it's too nuanced and complex for an outsider. And others said, no, you just can't understand. But I wanted to understand. I wanted to understand so badly. So I started taking research trips to Spain. I started meeting witnesses who brought the country's history and hardship to life. There's a lot of fantastic and very important writing and research on the Spanish Civil War. But what interested me most was the post-war period during Franco's dictatorship. In order to weave together the various interpretations of the Franco period, I tell the story through a cast of characters. We have Raphael, a boy who must beat fear. Anna, a heart condemned to silence. Puri, a girl who seeks the truth. Daniel, an American traveler, completely unaware, and Fuga, a glimpse of our higher self. I use themes of freedom and identity in building each character, secret dreams that are working through each person. And all the while, unbeknownst to the characters, fate is pulling strings that will tie them all together. It's my favorite part of the whole process. I spent seven years researching this novel, traveling back and forth to Spain, hunting down information through interviews and archives. It's definitely my most ambitious research effort yet. But I quickly learned that what people had told me, it was correct, they were right. I thought through research and traveling to Spain that I could understand the Spanish Civil War and the post-war period. No. Not only is it difficult for an outsider to understand, I continually found myself asking, what right do we have to history other than our own? My previous projects and books have contained threads of my own personal family history. So I was able to write those stories from the inside out. But when I began my research for what became the Fountains of Silence, I realized that if I wanted to write about Spain, I'd have to write from the outside in, an American in Spain. So I studied the intersections between Spain and the United States. I learned that during the 1950s, Franco allowed the installation of American military bases. Americans, they, they wanted a strategic position in Europe against the Soviets. I also learned that in order to stimulate cash flow into Spain, the Franco regime allowed American tourism, filming of American movies, and they allowed the Texas oil barons to drill for oil. By the late 1950s, American visitors were flooding into Spain, 
and the first Hilton hotel in Europe, the Castellana Hilton. It was in Madrid, and it was very close to the U.S. Embassy. Americans in Madrid, they stayed at the Castellana Hilton. So that became the setting of my novel. To look through an American lens historically and politically, I read through mountains of oral history reports given by American diplomats and members of the Foreign Service who were in Madrid and Spain at the time. I combed through diplomatic archives, presidential archives, national archives, and obtained my official research credentials with the National Library of Spain in Madrid. Sometimes forgetting is a way to be gentle and maintain peace. Following Franco's death in 1975, Spain began the Herculean task of transitioning to democracy. In hopes of pursuing a transition that would be peaceful, an amnesty law was passed in 1977. It freed political prisoners and allowed those in exile to return to Spain. The law also granted impunity to those who may have committed or participated in crimes during the war and the dictatorship. The law paved the way for what is known as the Pact of Forgetting. Some historians have described the Pact of Forgetting as necessary for a smooth and peaceful transition in Spain. Others question the long-term effects of silence on historical memory, identity construction, and human dignity. During my research for the Fountains of Silence, the fragile tension between history and memory emerged. Some people were desperate to remember, and others were desperate to forget. Can't we all relate to that in some way? But one thing was clear, suffering. Suffering was the victor of the Spanish Civil War and the dictatorship, touching all sides and breaking so many hearts. Every nation has wounds in painful history, but when stories of historical conflict are read and discussed, we have an opportunity to be united in story and study and remembrance. And in that way, books join us together, not only as a global reading community, but as a global human community, striving to learn from the past. The more we know of another country's history, the more meaningful and respectful our relations might be. As an outsider, I could never say to the people of Spain, Basque Country, or Catalonia, I could never say, I know your pain. But what I can say is, I feel your pain. I have spent years researching, and I feel your story. And in writing The Fountains of Silence, I hope so desperately that readers will feel it too. My hope is that this novel might inspire conversations on fate and fortune and the lines that divide, conversations that result in progress to build new bridges that will endure the tests of time and historical memory. Because when that happens, maybe old dividing lines will begin to fade. History and hardship won't disappear, but perhaps we can come to a point where it no longer stands between us, but it flows through us.